We're talking about know your ministry. Know your ministry. Can you say that with me? Know your ministry. Now, we're talking about it because it's important. And if you'll stay with me for the next 27 minutes, I believe I can help you. I believe I can, I can make a difference in your life. If you'll just uh, don't leave and don't go outside and don't go order a pizza from Emo's. Just stay right there where you're at right now, okay? Because I believe for the next 27 minutes, God's going to give us a special word. Know your ministry. First Peter chapter 4, I'm going to the board. Let's look at it. It says this. Each one of you received a gift. Each one of you received a gift, but not just a gift. What does it say, family? A spiritual gift. So let's make the distinction. When we were born naturally, we all received gifts, talents, abilities, bents from our parents. It's hereditary. But this is talking about at the new birth. When you and I get born again, when we get converted, when we give our heart to Christ, here's how it works. The Holy Spirit comes into our human spirit. And he, as he wills, we can't pick it. We can't choose it. As he wills, he drops the Holy Spirit in, inside us a spiritual gift. Here it's called a spiritual divine endowment. Could we call it a special anointing? I think so. Every one of us as born-again believers, every member has a ministry, and every believer has an anointing. Now, we, everyone has a gift. So watch this now. Here's how it works. We break it down is we take that gift that God gave us at the new birth and we use it to fulfill his plan for our life. We take that gift. We need that gift to fulfill our calling. We need that gift to fulfill our ministry. We need that gift to fulfill God's will and plan for our life. That's why you need to know your ministry. You need to know that spiritual gift because without being aware of it and developing it and using it, we can't fulfill God's will for our life. We can't fulfill God's assignment, God's plan, God's purpose, or God's ministry that he has for all of us. Because every member, each one of us, according to that verse, has been given a special gift. We take that gift and we serve God, serve others, follow God's purpose for our life. And you know what that's called? Ministry. That's called ministry. So everyone say it with me. I have a ministry. I am needed valued and important for such a time as this. Amen. Now, here's what I know. When we get together at Church on the Rock, and you might be new, you've just joined a watch party or a small group, or you've gathered with a neighbor and you're watching online today. At Church on the Rock, when we come together, we come together to grow. We don't want to just go through the motion. We don't need religion. We don't need another service. But you, all of us here, you need to know, we come together to grow. I want to grow, and I want to see you grow. I know you want to see your brothers and sisters in this church family grow. Amen, everybody? Well, we can't grow. Watch this now. This is good. Even for you parents, get a hold of this for your kids. We can't grow without affirmation. We need affirmation to grow. Uh, there's enough accusation in the world right now. In fact, the Bible calls the devil the accuser of the brethren. And there's a lot of accusations going on. But in our spiritual family at Church on the Rock, there's a lot of affirmation going on. We need to affirm one another now like never before to each other that you have a ministry and you have a ministry and you're important and you're needed and you're wanted and you can belong and you can become and we want you blessed more than ever before. Without affirmation, we can't grow. So what I'm doing during this whole series is I'm giving you a mega, mega affirmation. Every week I'm telling you, you have a ministry. You are an original. You are unique. You were created by God. You need to know your origin, and your origin is not a monkey. Your origin is not some swamp. Your origin is not fog. Your origin, what, is God. God created you. You need to know your origin, and you need to know that he made you an original. So don't die a copy. Don't be less 
than what God created you to become. So it's important then that through affirmation, and that's what I'm doing every weekend, is I'm wanting you to know, like never before, the church needs you, that the body of Christ needs you that they need you to function and follow where you fit in the family of God. So we're talking about knowing your ministry. Am I right? Knowing your ministry. Well, I, I, I listened to this podcast on my iPhone, and it's called Harvard Business Review. It's for entrepreneurs, business people, leaders, movers, shakers. It's called HBR. Harvard Business Review. And I've had that podcast for a long time. I also, I used to get, they had a quarterly magazine for business leaders, entrepreneurs, movers and shakers, uh, people who were leading organizations, businesses, families, or their own personal life. And it was called the Harvard Business Review. Now, I haven't got the, the magazine, especially during COVID, but Friday, Kim and I, we get the blessing of taking our grandkids out on Fridays and have fun. And one of the things they wanted to do was there were some books, children's books, and things they wanted to look at at Barnes & Noble here in St. Peter's. So we went to Barnes & Noble, and while they're looking at children's books and toys, I wander over to the magazine rack. I go to the business section, and right there on, on the front rack is the Harvard Business Review magazine. Well, on the front of it, if I'm lying, I'm frying. On the front of it, it said five qualities that you need to lead through COVID. This is secular now. This is Harvard. Harvard Business Review. And right on the front of the magazine, it said five qualities that you will need as an individual to lead yourself, your family, your business, your corporation, that you'll need to lead them through COVID. The number one thing, you know what it said in Harvard Business Review? A compelling purpose. A compelling purpose. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about your purpose, that you have a ministry, and your ministry is your purpose. So what am I doing? I'm equipping you to get through what we're going through and come out as a victor and not a victim. By telling you, you have a purpose, you have a ministry. Harvard Business Review said, if you're going to make it through as an overcomer, as a winner, as successful, you've got to have a compelling purpose. Can you say that with me? Compelling purpose. I'm going to give you a testimony. I'm the founding pastor. If you're watching online, you're new, we welcome you. You're in a small group, a watch party, or just join some friends. I founded this church 37 years ago, had the privilege, 37 years ago. But during COVID, if, if, during COVID, if it wasn't for my call, if it wasn't for my ministry, I would have retired. I would have quit. When this started in March, I'm old enough, I can retire. I, I would have quit because of the pressure. Do you know you can go online right now, look at George Barna Research, George Barna Research. More churches are closing right now during COVID. Churches are closing than in the history of America. More pastors are quitting in the history of America right now than ever before. Check it out, George Barnett Research. That pastors are quitting and churches are closing up like never before. Why? The pressure. Well, pastor, I've got pressure. You don't got pressure like I got. That's why I need you to pray for me. Because you got your family, I've got 2,000 families that I'm accountable before God to lead through COVID as a bright and shining light in a dark world. Amen. So please, when you pray over your food, pray over your pastor and his family. But the only thing that's kept me here, because I, I would have went to another state where there were less uh, uh, problems and less pressure and, and, and more seclusion. I would have quit. I would have ran away. Chuck, you've been here from the beginning. I would have quit, but the only thing that kept me here is I know I have a ministry here. I know I'm called here. I know this is my space and this is my place. What is that? A compelling purpose. What do you need? A compelling purpose. What is that? Your ministry. Because nobody can minister like you can. Nobody can do it like you can. 
You are needed like never before to plug in and be a part of the family of God. Can we have a praise break? Come on, let's praise God. Let's give God glory for the ministry that he's given to you. So with that said, review real quick is what did we find out last weekend for everybody at home? Each person has a spiritual gift at conversion. Remember, at your natural birth, you got natural talent. But at the new birth, you got spiritual gifts. You take that gift and you use it to fulfill God's plan for your life. That's called ministry. Number two, we found out where to use it to build up the local church. Do we ever need to be built up? We need to be built up now. Amen, everybody? Well, we all need to be encouraged. Number three, we are to use it to be a blessing and a benefit to other people. Number four, we learned last week, we're to use it to bring glory to who? To God. We're to use it to bring glory to God. Now, here's where I want to land. You and I have major enemies to our ministry. Every member has a ministry, and you need to know your ministry. Pastor, I know it. Then I want to help you excel in it and get better and sharpen your, your gifts. But you need to know that every member has been given a ministry, and then you need to know your ministry, and then you know you need your spiritual gifts that God's given to you to fulfill your ministry. But we all have enemies to our ministry. Because you do know the devil doesn't want you to walk in your mission. The devil does not want you to walk in your life mission. He wants us to waste our life. So I want to give you three, three, and it'll be quick enough. You'll get to the ice cream truck before the ice cream melts. Amen, everybody? All right, so three enemies to our ministry. And they all start with the letter C so we can retain them. So number one is comparing yourself to other people. Boy, that's really a downer, isn't it? That is really self-defeating when you and I compare ourselves to other people. Uh, we say, I wish I looked like them. I wish I could sing like her. I wish I could talk like him. I wish I was an extrovert like that person. I wish I, I, I wish I could sing like that, whatever. But did you know that when we compare ourselves to other people, it keeps us from being our original purpose, our original ministry and function God gave to us. So comparing yourself. So bottom line, we should never compare our church to the church across the street. That's unfair for both churches. We should never compare our family to other families. You should never compare your kids to other kids. You should never compare yourself to other people. Your origin is God, and God made you an original. But when you compare yourself with other people, you'll never step out and get mobilized in your ministry. And you'll settle for less than best and live a frustrated life and a small life instead of a large life and a fulfilled life. So let me give you my scripture to base this thought on, and that is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12. Y'all still with me, family? Y'all still with me at home, everybody? So the first enemy to our ministry is what? Comparing. Our first enemy to our ministry is what? Comparing. For we dare not make ourselves of the number who compare. It's in the Bible. That word is in the Bible. That is the King James Version, the one Paul preached from. It's a joke. It wasn't back there, folks, with Paul, okay? For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with other people by measuring themselves by themselves and comparing yourself with other people is not what? Wise. Is not what? Wise. See, I, I thank you for, and you're doing great. I need you to interact with me here because if people aren't interacting at home, they won't stay with us. So they need to hear your interaction, and you are motivating them to interact with us. Because if they don't interact, we'll eventually lose them. So there's got to be a connection. So it says when we compare ourselves among ourselves, what does it say at the end? It is not wise. Oh, you're all doing good. People need to hear you engaged so they'll get engaged. Amen. So we won't lose them. 
So uh, the Living Bible says this, people who compare themselves among themselves are el stupido. That's the only Spanish I know, okay? But it says stupid. Now, I didn't say that. So think about it. When you compare your family with another family, the Living Bible says that's stupid. When you compare our church with another church and what they're doing, the Bible says that's stupid. When you compare yourself with other people and want to be somebody else and not your original self, the Bible says that's stupid. You know, I want to add this. Actually, it's sin. Because to know to do right and not to do it, that's sin. To know what the Bible says and not do it, that's transgression, and that's called sin. So every time, and I've done it, we all do it. Our culture does it. But we're always comparing ourselves and judging ourselves against other people. And you know what? That will belittle yourself. That will defeat yourself. And that'll keep you stuck. And you'll never step out and mobilize your life through your ministry. So number one enemy to our ministry is comparing. I sure do love y'all. Number two is conforming to other people, copying them. Our good friend John Mason wrote a book, You Were Born an Original, Don't Die a Copy. Oh, my goodness. Look what it says. Conforming to other people. That's the second enemy. The first enemy was comparing. Let's stop comparing our wife with other wives, our husbands with other husbands, our children with other children, our church with other church, ourself with other people. It will only defeat you, demeanor you, belittle you, and rob you of the life mission God has for you. And we need you right now, Church on the Rock. We need you, my brother and sister. We need one another. You are highly valued, respected, honored, and loved in this family. You are needed. So uh, let me give you a scripture that, that will establish this thought. Don't, what's the word in the yellow? Copy. Don't copy. Oh, my goodness. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Now, if you'll allow me the privilege, I'm going to take off on a little rabbit trail over here, okay? I'm going to divert just a little bit. You know, it really saddens me to see the church becoming like the world trying to reach the world. That saddens me. Now, I'm not old-fashioned, and I'm not religious. Those of you who know me know that I'm not. But the Bible says we're to come out from among the world, and we're to be separate. We're not to be weird, not to be super spiritual, and not to be judgmental. And we're not to criticize the world. We're not to condemn the world. But nor are we to be like the world. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. The Bible says we're in this world, but not of this world. We're never going to reach the world by becoming like the world. You know, I just heard of a church, and this is between them and God, but I just heard of a church in a state nearby, and it's a large mega church. And they said that one of the things they've stopped doing now at this church, it's over in Indiana, it's a large church, runs several thousands, and they said we're going to stop calling our church services worship services. We're going to stop calling church church. This is what they said. And we're going to start calling our church services, our worship services, we're going to start calling them episodes. Because the world is watching episodes of Star Wars and everything else under the sun on TV. So we want to catch them and attract them. So now we're going to call our church services episodes. Well, I don't know about you, but I have enough episodes in my own daily life. I don't need to go to church and have another episode. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I need to have an experience, an encounter with my brothers and sisters and with God when I come to church. So I'm going to get back off that rabbit trail now. I'm not judging anybody, but I'm saying I think sometimes we try to be so much like them to reach them, we lose our punch, our anointing, our platform, our difference. It's the differences that make you stand out and cause you to be a success. So don't copy the world and the customs of this world, but let, not the world, but let God transform you into a new person. Now, I like that there because I was told growing up I would never change. 
I'm sure you were too. I was told I would never change, but you know what? Uh, 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 God said something that the world didn't know. They said I couldn't change, but God said, you can change, Dave. You can change. You can be transformed. Look at that word transform. It's metamorphous in the Greek. It means change from inside out. You can't change a community outside in. You change a community, but people's hearts changing first. Amen. With the riots and, 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 and all of the, the havoc and, and all of the uproar and all of the bad things that are going on right now, that's not going to bring lasting change. Because until a heart changes, the person will never change. But the good news is, is when the world tells us we can't change, God tells us we can. That God can transform our marriage, transform our children, transform us. That God can change us. That's good news. And, and, and we tell people that every Thursday night, Celebrate Recovery that's a ministry for people with hurts and hangups and habits. And we let them know that even though man said it's impossible, that you'll never break free, you'll never get free, that you'll never change, we want to tell you, you can change. You can break free. It can get better. God can do the impossible. Okay, let's give God a big praise break. Everybody at home, praise the Lord with us here. Hallelujah. Now, now, where's God going to start? He transforms you into a new person by changing the way you think. It all starts with our thinking process. Then you'll be able to learn to know God's will for your life. Oh, my goodness. We want to know God's will for our life. We want to know God's plan for our life. And we want to know the gift, the spiritual gift God gave to us. Because when we take that gift and follow his will, it's called ministry. But if I keep comparing myself with other people, I'm watering down my ministry. I, 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 I'm watering down. I'm downscaling. I, I, I am belittling the life God gave me to build. Number two, if I'm conforming, always trying to please other people, always trying to blend in, give in to peer pressure, and conform to the world at work, at school, in the neighborhood, that's an enemy to who God created you to be, an original. And you have a ministry that nobody else has. Oh, pastor, there are other people that do what I do, but not like you do it. Not like you do it. And number three, as the team comes out, the third enemy, the third enemy is complaining. <laughs> oh, boy. Shazam, like Gomer Pyle. If we ever saw complaining, that spirit, we see it now, don't we? People are complaining. They're negative. They're hurting. Uh, I, we understand it. You know, we're going through pressures we've never gone through before. But I'm telling you, it, it's at a level I've never seen before in my life, complaining. Uh, here's what I know, that if I complain, then God won't give me any more. If I complain, then God won't reveal any more. God won't lead any more. Really, Pastor? Story in the Bible, Old Testament, children of Israel, Moses coming out of Egypt, God wanted to take them into the abundant life, promised land. Why couldn't God take them? Why couldn't he take them? They were complaining in the desert. Complaining stopped their ministry. Complaining stopped them in their tracks. Complaining caused their life to be over before it was over. And they died in the wilderness. Am I right, everybody? So let me give you a scripture that will establish that thought. Do all things without grumbling, fault-finding, and complaining. Complaining grieves the heart of God. Complaining about the color of our skin, our, eye, our, our eyes, our hair. Complaining about our, our hereditary, our family, our, our, the generations, grandparents. Complaining grieves God. Because the Bible says the clay should never complain to the potter. Jesus is the potter, and we are the clay. You are not a mistake. You are an original. And you were made for such a time as this. And you have a ministry. And it matters. The church is depending on it. Other people are depending on it. Your family are depending on it. So let's stop comparing. Let's stop complaining. And let's stop conforming. And let's be, get mobilized, and know our ministry, and make a difference with our life. Everybody, 
You all ready to do that? I believe you are. I'm done. Give God a big praise, would you? Amen. 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 Would you be so sweet just to bow your heads and close your eyes and believers are praying under their breath. And those of you online, our online campus, don't leave me yet. Across the street, don't leave yet. This is the altar call. This is where the Holy Spirit's moving right now. There are people who want to know their purpose that are watching. There are people who've been told they could never change who are watching. There are people who've been belittled, called names, looked down upon, marred, scarred by society that are watching right now. And you need hope. You need a new beginning. You need to know things can change. You can change. But it all starts by giving my life to God. If you've never given your heart to God, do it right now. I don't want you to do it because you feel like you have to. No one's forcing you. But, but are you receptive? And if you're ready, and I believe many of you are, you see, Pastor, I'm ready for a change. I'm ready to give God my life. I'm ready to make him the center and the foundation of my life. Pray for me. Or you're a Christian and you say, I'm lukewarm. I'm backslidden. I'm not where I should be. I want to recommit. I want to get right. I get it. I understand it. That's wonderful. Let COVID draw you closer to God. Let it happen. So we're all going to pray out loud. And so wherever you're at, pray out loud with us. Everybody, would you do it with me out loud, please? Here we go. Heavenly Father, I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me. He rose again. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Help me know my ministry. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. And take my life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching today. Here at Church on the Rock, our purpose is to help you know God better. And one way to do that is to help you take your next step. Head on over to cotr.org slash online, or you can email us online at cotr.org. We want to connect with you. We want to help you along your journey through Growth Track or maybe a small group. We want to get you connected today. Love you and appreciate you. And never forget, God is for you.